Hey guys, this is Joshua from Deptic Channel, and today we're going to be discussing the engine that Caterpillar is producing for what seems to be the replacement for the C15, C18, and basically the 3400 series of engines, which Cat had been producing and still is producing since the 1980s, basically. And the engine I'm talking about is the C13D, and Caterpillar just unveiled this engine at Con Expo 2023, and as you can tell, it is a 13 liter engine. Now, CAT does make a C13, but from what I can tell, this is a completely different engine. Let's look at the pictures, the information we do have on it, kind of see what's different, and discuss some of the, what seems to be, improvements over CAT's older engines. So like I said, there's not a lot of information from Caterpillar on these out there outside of a lot of marketing information, but this is one of the pictures they released of it. Now, it was at the Con Expo, not a... I believe running version but basically close to production version i believe it's supposed to come out in 2025 as well and it's been in production since 2020. a trained eye can see a lot of the things about this just by looking at it externally and the first thing you can notice is this is a common rail engine so the c13 and the c15 were not common rail they were ui or mui as they call it electronic unit injector which has a cam actuated injector system these are not that though and pretty much all engines diesel engines at least have gone to common rail for the most part and there's advantages to that obviously they're generally easier starting in cold weather they're generally quieter there's less moving mass in the engine because you don't need a camshaft to actuate the injectors you still need a camshaft obviously for the valves but it's a much different system also the ability to run higher pressures they can be more fuel efficient however there are disadvantages as well you then have to have an external high pressure pump you've got a lot more fuel lines on the engine and the injectors in general are a lot more sensitive to contaminants than the older injector design so you can see that this is indeed a common row engine one of the big things i noticed that pretty much all of cat's engines at least they're inline sixes before this I'd always had was a front gear train. But if you look at this one, you got a appears to be an AC compressor, an alternator above that. There is no gear train on the front of this engine. You can see that because there's really just your damper, and then it goes straight into the block. That's a big departure from Cat's other engines that are pretty much all front gear train. Outside of when you get into the big stuff like 3500 series and stuff. So if you don't have a front gear train, you still have to have a gear train to time your camshaft to your crankshaft. And the way they do that is, as you can see, it's a rear gear train. Also, the high pressure pump, which feeds high pressure fuel into the common rail, is driven off the rear of the engine. Now you can see a filter manifold here, which the fuel system in kind of one of those inverted uh, cartridge style fuel systems that a lot of manufacturers have gone to not the biggest fan of those plastic filter housings but there's a reason why they're going to those it there are advantages to them because you don't have to worry about spinning on filters you just have this canister style filter it seems to be the way of the future folks um, but that's what they went to here and you can see unlike most cat engines where the ecm kind of sits back uh, between cylinders five and six, this one actually sits more forward, and that is because the high pressure fuel pump now sits towards the back of the engine, so they move the ECM forward. And that's mostly the biggest changes I can see. Uh, the intake on this one is much different. So most of like the C15, C13s, the intakes are pretty much always in the center of the cylinder head, as you can see. This one, it's actually in the very forward section of the cylinder head, and it goes in at an angle opposed to generally straight in from the side or i guess it wouldn't be straight in to be 90 degrees angle from the side and what i don't see is any sort of egr mixing valve or an egr cooler or anything that would probably be on the exhaust side but don't really see that on this one so here's a picture of the exhaust side of the engine and as you can see single turbocharger appears to be a vgt turbo variable geometry turbo because it has a vgt actuator on it also seems like it's picking up I'm assuming that is oil. Uh, Cat usually uses oil controlled VGT actuators. However, that could be coolant to help cool down the module inside of there. And you can see that it has the uh, cartridge style oil filter also where I'd said there's a 
might be the oil filter on the intake side. Those are both fuel filters, and this is our oil filter over here. Now, what I don't see is the water pump. I'm not sure where that's running from. If it's somewhere behind this uh, filter housing here, or exactly where it's going on, I'm, I'm not really sure on that one. Now, it could be, I do see a pulley here, so it could be a belt-driven water pump, which cats, usually they're heavier duty engines. They've been gear-driven water pumps, like the C13, C15, those are gear-driven. Maybe they went to a belt style water pump here. Now, I am not a big fan of AGT turbos, folks. I've made videos in the past where Cat actually used a turbocharger that basically had a two speed turbine housing and it used a balance valve to kind of speed up or slow down the turbocharger without an actual any moving components outside of the actual turbine itself. And VGT turbos, in my opinion, folks, are a pain because you have a moving parts inside of a turbocharger that generally make the turbocharger much more expensive those the actuator that actuates the turbocharger to increase or decrease boost is very sensitive generally and since it's a carbon rich environment because it's on the exhaust side it can be a real pain in the butt and it seems like most manufacturers are going that way i'm not a fan of that. Now, you may notice that the valve cover is extremely hard from the pictures to get on and off because, of course, it has the DPF and the SCR catalyst over the valve cover like pretty much all CAD engines do now. And that's always a problem because it, when you have to do your valve adjustment, you have to remove all that stuff. Now, CAT generally calls that a CEM, clean emissions module. And they do make it so you can remove it without spending 20 hours of labor to remove it off of there. There's a couple electrical connections and stuff, but one thing is you don't have to do valve adjustments anymore on this one because this uses hydraulic lifters, hydraulic lash adjusters. Now, I don't know why they call them hydraulic lash adjusters, just call them hydraulic lifters. I don't know why Cat always has to come up with new names for everything, but maybe it's because the rocker arms are somehow, I don't know. This is obviously a pushrod engine because obviously the gear train does not extend into the head. So it must have lifters of some sort. Why not just call them hydraulic lifters? They don't. So that is interesting because CAT has always used mechanical uh, lifters to go into a hydraulic. Now the CAT 7.1 has hydraulic lifters, but that's a Perkins engine and those are while diesel engines they have they're not as heavy duty built if you ever go through one as this engine is now what i was trying to find is whether this engine block uses replaceable liners i'm assuming it does because it's a heavier duty engine but as of this time of the recording i can't find any information on whether it does use replaceable wet liners or not it doesn't say so anywhere and one thing i did find kind of interesting was they were talking about the common rail injectors and how great it is and a few interesting things came up so it's got an oil lubricated transfer pump which I, I don't know what they mean by that because usually your transfer pumps are gear driven and usually those are exposed to the oil system but it says hydraulic lubricated so I'm wondering if part of the transfer pump is actually being supplied engine oil that would be unusual the high pressure fuel pumps are usually oil lubricated um, but one thing it says is three times more robust than existing MUI A injectors. Now, if you know what a MUI, that's what I was discussing earlier, is that's a mechanical electronic unit injector that is camshaft actuated. For them to make the claim that they are three times more robust is quite a statement because MUI injectors, in my experience, are the longest lasting injectors you will find in a diesel engine. They... I've seen them go a million miles. They don't, they're not very sensitive to contaminants. I've seen them run and fire when the springs are broken. They're very long lasting injectors. Generally, common rail injectors do not last as long as the MUI injectors do, at least in my experience. Now, maybe there's something special about these common rail injectors, but any injector, when you're exposing it to these super high PSI pressures of the common rail system, and wanting it to fire, you know, five times every stroke of the piston, usually that means they're more sensitive. So while this claim of three times more robust, we're going to have to see if that really holds up. Now, how about a little destruction of the week before we end our discussion on the C13D?
This week's instruction of the week comes from Hugh, and Hugh sent me an engine. I believe he said it was a 7 liter. It's a DAF engine. He asked if we had them in the States. I do not believe so, but it could be... Sp- Detroit might be using it here and call it a DD7 or something, but basically this one threw a rod, folks, as you can see. And yeah, broke right through the block there. You can see the connecting rod. This one's totally gone, folks. Here's a picture of the oil pan. Yeah, you don't generally want huge chunks of rotating engine components inside the oil pan, folks, but uh, thank you to you for setting that, and let's get back to our discussion on the C13D. Pretty much covered all the major components here one thing i did find really interesting though is it looks like they're trying to integrate everything so it looks like the fuel module consolidates functionality of a dozen components so basically they don't want you to change the transfer pump by itself or the fuel filter blah 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 it's going to be one big part and if something fails in that it looks like you probably be replacing the entire module which makes it easier for assembly And if there's a problem, you're replacing almost the entire system by itself. However, that's a real problem for cost. Like, let's say it's a $20 part or a fitting inside of that module and it ends up needing replaced. Well, you're going to be buying that whole module and I'm assuming it costs a lot more than $20. Now, notice the service intervals here. They're saying 1,000 hour fuel and oil changes on these. And that's an extended, although... I don't know what they mean by extended. If that's the oil change interval, that's not an extended oil change interval. That is that is the oil change interval, but a thousand hours is a long time. Usually your oil change interval is about 250 hours. So if it really is four times as long, I mean, that that is good news. That's a lot of savings to the owner. And they're saying a new cartridge filter technology. I'd really like to see what the new filter cartridge technology is. I mean. There's only so many things you can do with filtering filtering contaminants out of a fluid system, folks. And unless you make the filter really, really big, over time they're going to plug no matter what you do. So um, that is really cool though that they are saying that. I will always love this term to tertiary filter. Um, removes the need for a tertiary filter. Tertiary is a fancy way of saying third filter. So you usually have your primary and secondary and then your tertiary, although it just means third uh interesting that they're saying thousand hour service intervals that would be good for the owner so has cat really come out and say that they are replacing the 3400 series with this engine well no they have not however they have said that this takes the place horsepower wise of the 3400 series basically what they're saying without directly saying it is yes this engine if it seems to work out okay is going to be replacing the C15s and the lower horsepower C18s, it sounds like, that are in the engines. And of course, it's gonna replace the C13s. It is a C13, although not the original C13, it's the C13D. I wish they would have called it something else other than a C13D because that tends to make you think that it is a normal C13. I, I don't know what else they would have called it, but what do I think about it? Well, it's interesting. I mean, it. It may be, maybe this engine is going to be better than the 3400 series or the C13, but only time will tell, folks. There's a few things I like about it, a few things I don't like about it. And why don't you tell me what you think about it in the comment section? And thanks for watching.